Fellas, I'm going to be ranking every single Alex Pereira fight in the UFC so far. Considering after his last couple of performances, he's definitely built himself up to be the biggest star or one of the biggest stars in the UFC outside of McGregor. He's definitely the face of the UFC right now. And it just seems like every single time he fights, he's getting closer to that GOAT status. He's adding more and more names to his resume, more title defenses. So I thought considering he just butchered Cleo Roundtree, it would be the perfect time to rank every single one of his fights in the UFC from his UFC debut up until his, just, his recent fight with Cleo Roundtree. And we'll start off with his UFC debut debut against Andreas, the first time Pereira competed in the UFC, and I'm going to put this fight in B tier. Uh, yeah, this was obviously Pereira's debut um, when he first joined the UFC, and he was relatively unknown at this point. Everyone knew he came from kickboxing, and it was kind of only being hyped up as the guy that beat Adesanya twice. Um, in this fight, he faced a lot of grappling adversity early on in that first round. Andreas was able to hold him up against the cage, secure a couple of takedowns in that first round, but in that second round, Paul Tom timed it perfectly, got a flying knee on Andreas and knocked him out cold, and I'm going to put it in B tier, definitely, well not out cold, but he knocked him out, I'm going to put it in B tier, definitely one of Paul Tom's best knockouts in the UFC, or at least one of his cleanest knockouts in the UFC so far, um, considering, we, and which is kind of crazy because it was his debut and it's still one of his best knockouts, I feel I can't really put it above B tier considering he, did, he didn't do it to a high level opponent, he didn't do it when the world was watching, he didn't do it in a title fight, it was his UFC debut when not a lot of people really knew who he were, but if we're talking about the knockout, it's it was still one of Pereira's best knockouts in the UFC, in my opinion, and it kickstarted his UFC career because I feel like if Pereira started off the UFC and he had a bit of a controversial decision or he just didn't really have that that impressive of a performance. I don't know if he would have had as much hype, but considering he started off his UFC career with a fly knee, knocked him out, knocked out Andreas, um, he definitely kickstarted his UFC career, and it kind of, you know, showed us what's what's to come from Porton. So I'm going to put that fight, his UFC debut against Andreas in B tier. Um, definitely a great knockout, one of his best knockouts in the UFC still, in my opinion, but it wasn't like it was against a high-level opponent with the world watching. Then we've got his fight with Bruno Silva. This was his second fight in the UFC. I'm actually going to put his fight with Bruno Silva in D tier. Now, it wasn't a terrible fight. you got to remember, this is a tier list based on other Peloton fights, not in general. Uh, but I'm going to put it in D tier. I think it's the most forgettable uh, fight of uh, Pereira's career. It's um, one of his two fights to actually go to a decision in the UFC. Every other fight has ended in a finish. This was one of them that actually went to a decision. Um, and I just wasn't that rememberable. He was piecing up Bruno Silva, but Bruno Silva's got a really good shin to so was able to survive. It was just Poloton basically piecing up Bruno Silva in the apex. There wasn't a crowd. Again, it wasn't against one of these extremely high-level ranked fighters. It wasn't a title pitcher fight. The world was still kind of... Um, unfamiliar with Polton at this point because he hasn't really built himself up to be his top star. And it was probably his most forgettable fight in the UFC so far. He did really good in the fight. Like I said, he pieced up Bruno Silva, but um, considering that nothing significant really came from this fight and super memorable, I can't really put it above D tier in comparison to the rest of his fights in his UFC uh, resume. So I'm going to put this fight against Bruno Silva in D tier. One of his worst, not one of his worst fights, but definitely one of his most forgettable fights. And then he got pushed already into a ranked fight against Sean Strickland. I'm going to put the fight against Sean Strickland in A tier. I think this is one of his best knockouts is Andy's UFC career so far. But it was it was the fact that he, he did it to Strickland as well. After two fights, he got a ranked opportunity against Sean Strickland, a guy that um, was already pretty uh, seasoned in the UFC at the time. And obviously, as we know, he's definitely one of the best in the world now. And he goes out there and just knocks out Strickland with that left hook. Strickland did well early on boxing him. And another thing was, this is when the world was watching. It was on a pay-per-view, on the same pay-per-view, I think, as Adesanya and Kananir, where he fought Strickland. And this is kind of being hyped up as the number one contender fight with a winner, especially if Paul Tom wins he's going to get a title shot so everyone was intrigued to see how Porton does against his toughest test yet in Sean Strickland so for him to go out there in that first round and knock Sean Strickland out cold in the way that he did which is aged really well considering you know how Sean Strickland's looking in the UFC these days I'm going to put it in A tier it wasn't a title fight so I feel like I can't really put it in S tier and at the same time he was still when it was his third fight in the UFC uh, but this was definitely the fight that kind of showed us what Pereira is capable of. And this was the fight that granted him that title shot against Adesanya with only three wins in the UFC. So the fight with Sean Strickland, in my opinion, one of his best knockouts, um, again, against an extremely high-skilled opponent because after this fight, uh, Strickland would go on to become the middleweight champion of the world. So I'm going to put Porton versus Strickland in A tier, one of his best knockouts in the UFC. Um, and this was the fight where we really started to see and the world really started to see who Porton was. It wasn't like he was getting these knockouts in his debut against unfamiliar opponents. He did it to Sean Strickland. We knew he was legit at this point. And then he had his title fight against Israel Adesanya. This was the first fight they had in the UFC. I'm going to put this one in B tier too. Now, this fight was... I'm going to be honest, I think Adesanya was winning the majority of this fight. I would say that Adesanya was 
on his way to cruising to a decision. But this had so much hype around it, which is why it's got to go at least in B tier because Porton had beaten Adesanya twice before in kickboxing. Adesanya was the middleweight champion that seemed to be unbeatable in the middleweight division. And Porton just comes into the UFC with three wins, knocks out Sean Strickland, gets his title shot. And it's kind of like Adesanya's buggy man. And for Adesanya to win pretty much the entire fight and then right at the end in that fifth round, Porton just you know gets a massive comeback, kind of like a buggy man would, and gets that finish over Adesanya. I'm going to put it in B tier. It wasn't one of his best finishes. Um, I, I, I dare I even say it was kind of controversial. I think it was a perfect stoppage, but a lot of people online were saying, oh, it was sloppy. Adesanya wasn't really out. Adesanya could have continued. He was protesting afterwards. So it wasn't like he went in there with his left hook, put Adesanya to sleep out cold like he did in kickboxing. Um, so it was a bit of a sloppy finish, and he didn't win the majority of the fight. But it was one of the highest level striking matchups we are ever going to see in the UFC. And I'm going to put it in B tier. He won the belt. It was his first title fight in the UFC. His biggest fight at the time they had in MMA. And he did it to a former rival in Adesanya. I'm going to put it in B tier. And then we had his big rematch against Israel Adesanya. This was where Poaton obviously got knocked out cold. Now, it was one of the best knockouts in you. I'm going to put it in C tier, by the way. It was one of the best knockouts from Adesanya. If not, that was definitely the best knockout from Adesanya. One of the best knockouts of, um, well, in the UFC history, to be fair. The way that Adesanya, a guy that's beaten him three times already, for him to bounce back and get the knockout of a port on it was good. It's not necessarily the fight that I'm cr uh, critiquing. It's more of the aftermath and the result of this fight. Because ever since this fight, Adesanya... He just didn't really seem to be humble after this fight. Porton wasn't really saying anything bad about Adesanya. Obviously, I mean, I guess he can't after you've just been knocked out by him. And I guess Adesanya wanted to get his get back on him. But you're three once against the dude. Like, if you're going to beat him and you're going to get the knockout, fair enough, celebrate it. Maybe mock him a little bit. But for months afterwards, even when Pereira's in his light heavyweight career, for Adesanya to still be mocking him about that knockout losses if you're not three one against him. And he's finished you twice. Well, he's beaten you. He's finished you once. Yeah, twice before as well. I feel like Adesanya, yeah, it was just the result of this fight. And Adesanya fans all over the world every single time Polton gets a win now every single time I just see the same tweet how good is Israel Adesanya for beating Polton um, so I feel like the result of this fight is more of what puts it in C tier big fight great knockout from Adesanya if we talked about the knockout itself I'll probably put it in S tier but the result of this fight has to go in C tier and no one wants to see Polton lose to is he all people as well so Polton's only loss in the UFC I'm going to stick it in C tier then we had his fight against Jan Blachowicz. I'm actually going to put his fight in Jan Blachowicz with Jan Blachowicz, all the way in D tier as well um, yeah, this was another one of his fights, his second fight in the UFC to go to a decision. Uh, this just wasn't really, nothing really significant happened in this fight. No one really took any big shots and got rocked in this fight. Porton didn't really seriously nearly put Jan Blachowicz out of there or vice versa. The first couple of rounds were quite uninteresting as well. It was kind of just Jan Blachowicz taking Alex Pereira down, trying to secure a back take, but then he didn't really get the submission. Uh, second round for the first half, it was kind of the same. And then in that second, well, the, towards the end of the second round in that third round, Porton started lighting uh, Jan Blachowicz up and it was in Utah as well where Jan Blachowicz was completely gassed after the second round so it was a bit of a sloppy fight as well it wasn't for a belt either um, it was just after Porto had just been knocked out by Israel Adesanya as well so I'm going to put it in D tier uh, it granted him the title fights in the light heavyweight division have got him a win and on top of that as well it wasn't just the fight it was also the result as well there was a few people out there thinking that Jan Blachowicz should have won the fight it was quite a controversial result it just wasn't one of Poulton's best fights went to a decision wasn't the most interesting fight nothing significant happened it was just after it being KO'd and to top it all off there was a controversial decision so I'm going to put his toughest fight in the light heavyweight division so far against Jan Blachowicz or one of his toughest fights I know Khalil Roundtree's up there as well I'm going to put it in D tier um, it wasn't one of his best fights in the UFC, probably one of his worst. And then we have his first title fight in the light heavyweight division against Yuri Prohaska. I'm going to put his first title fight against Yuri in B tier. Now, the build-up to this fight was insane. I mean, you've got the samurai in Yuri Prohaska, the former champion, the guy that had looked great in the light heavyweight division, taking on the new title challenger in the light heavyweight division after fighting at middleweight, getting a win over Jan Blachowicz and Alex Pereira. You've got the you know the Amazon tribal member in Alex Pereira versus the samurai in Yuri Prohaska. The stare down, just the entire hype as well. The fact that Yuri was a former champion. They were both so interesting on the feet. It was such a good fight. Um, in the build-up as well, and even the fight itself, it was fun to see because Porton started off really well landing uh, to the leg of Yuri Prohaska. Then Yuri Prohaska started turning it up. The reason I've got to put it in B tier and I can't really put him above is because of the controversial stoppage. Obviously, Pereira was able to get the finish over Yuri Prohaska, but there was a lot of controversy over whether it was an early stoppage. Mark Goddard obviously thought that Yuri was out and he wasn't. So I think the stoppage kind of ruined the fight, so I can't really put it above B tier. But the build-up and the fact that it was a good fight, I am going to put it in B tier as one of Pereira's, not one of his best fights in the UFC, but definitely up there with, you know, 
it was a good fight. It was a good fight. The build-up, he won the belt as well. It was a title fight. It was a main event. Um, and he won the light heavyweight belt. So I'll put this first fight with Yuri in B tier. And then we had UFC 300 against Jamal Hill. This is the first S tier of the list. This has to go in S tier. Hill versus Pereira has to go in S tier, in my opinion. The main event of one of the biggest cards of all time, one of the biggest pay-per-views of all time, at least the biggest card of the year in UFC 300 against a guy that no one really wanted to see win because it was so salty. Coping all the time was Jamal Hill. Started trash-talking uh, uh, Alex Pereira before the fight in the press conference as well. So for, for Jamal Hill to get knocked out of all people as well against Alex Pereira, um, it was satisfying to see. And the way that he did it as well, uh, he got, obviously had to take that groin shot, waved back Herb Dean, and then eventually landed that left hook and knocked out Jamal Hill, which was one of the most satisfying KOs in UFC history. Um, I've got to put it in S tier. It had everything. The world was watching. It was on a big card. It was for a title fight. It was a defense. Pereira won. Hill lost. Um, it was a first round finish. What more could you want from this fight? I think it's definitely one of Pereira's best fights in the UFC. And I see this highlight every single time I see people talk about Porton. Every single time Jamal Hill pipes up, I just see the gif of him getting knocked out by Alex Pereira. So I think Pereira versus Hill has to make S tier. And so does Alex Pereira versus Yuri too. I think this is probably Pereira's most dominant performance so far. In his UFC career, at least at the highest level, I know he's had dominant performances, but at the highest level, this was such a dominant performance. The rematch with Yuri Prasker at UFC 303, Yuri had just come off that really good win over Alexander Rakic. Pereira had just come off that big win over Jamal Hill. Um, it was right back after UFC 300 at UFC 303. Again, the Samurai versus Alex Pereira, the rematch, the redemption, the potential uh, comeback for Yuri Prasker, the hype going into this, the stare down as well. And Pereira just looked so good in this fight. Pretty much knocked him out at the end of the first round. And then and in the second round, the first shot that he threw a head kick to put Yuri Prasker to sleep out cold. And in my opinion, I know I've said this a few times, but one of his best, if not potentially his best knockout in his UFC career so far. Went out there and completely settled the score with Yuri Prasker, obliterated him, battered him, knocked him out like twice in the same fight, and then give him CT with ground and pound as well. Um, yeah, I'm going to put this one in. I'm going to put this one in S tier. Definitely one of Porton's best fights, if not his best fight in the UFC so far. And then finally. His recent fight with Khalil Roundtree. I'm going to put his recent fight with Khalil Roundtree. I know there's going to be a lot of recency bias. I'm going to put it in A tier. I'm not going to put it on the same level as Hill versus Praska for two reasons. The first reason is that, well, f the main reason is that I, I think a lot of people were writing off Khalil Roundtree anyway. It wasn't like he was, you know, a, a closer fight than people expected. Because leading into that rematch with Yuri, I had a lot of people thinking that Yuri was going to be able to beat Paul Tom. Whereas in this fight... I feel like 99.9% .9 of MMA fans kind of knew that Paul Tom was going to win. The only people picking Khalil were people trying to get a Hail Mary take. Um, and he was against a guy that hadn't really beaten any top light heavyweights. His best win at the time was Anthony Smith. Um, and I know everyone was kind of talking about Ankalaev and how Ankalaev should get the title shot. So I can't really put it above AT for that reason. But it was a really good fight. Khalil really impressed me in those first two rounds. Started landing on Porton. Uh, dropped him as well in that second round. And then in the third and the fourth round, Porton just seemed to be in the floor. Landing on Yuri, landing on um, Khalil Roundtree. His defense was on point until that fourth round where he was just walking him down. Landing big shot after big shot. Butchering him. You know, just completely bloody in his face wobbled him multiple times until eventually in that fourth round got that stoppage. Khalil Roundtree's face looked like he'd just been, you know, slaughtered by a butcher. Alex Pereira, again, another defense against an extremely tough opponent. Um, it rose both of their stock as well. This was the fight. Well, after this fight, Porton's definitely, again, I mean, it was before, but still one of the biggest stars on the face of the UFC. And for Khalil Roundtree, he's now rose his stock massively despite losing. So Pereira versus Roundtree, I've got to put in A tier. It wasn't against a guy that everyone thought he was going to win, but I think it was a really good fight. It wasn't like Roundtree got dominated the entire fight because he did look good early on. But that is how I would rank every single Porton fight in the UFC so far. Let me know your thoughts on this tier list. If you agree, if you disagree, and thank you for watching.